What's up everybody, welcome to the Amateur Coder channel and today we're going to be looking at State Street Builder and whether it is the best state management solution out there. We're going to do that by demonstrating the very basics of it in an app that's similar to this. So we have our database with a counter of 12. We can start a stream of that database. So then we could, we could update this number to, let's say 14. I'll get updated here. We have a local state as well, which we can increment here and we can retrieve the future of the counter. That's, so it's 14, but we can also increment that and that's separated from the stream. So let's get into this bad boy. So I commented on one of the tickets in the repository for the States for Builder package. And the author of that package responded with this comment. These are the key points that he says make State Rebuilder so special. So the first thing, all the business logic is made out of 100% simple dark classes. You don't have to extend change notifier like you do in provider. You don't have to do any, any crazy things. It's just a simple dark class. The blocks methods can return any type, void, primitive, object, future, or stream. You can refactor them method to return any type without affecting the user interface code. Use immutable or mutable objects to mix them. Refactor to immutability without changing a single line in the UI code. Easily manage side effects and inject dependencies asynchronously. So basically the core principle around states rebuilder is you make your basic Dart class, for us is gonna be the counter state. Then what, whenever you wanna use it, you wrap it in this thing called a reactive model. And this reactive model lets you act on the state, lets you retrieve the state, see what status it is, and things like that. In a Medium article written by the author of the package, he kind of goes over this a little bit. So we have the singleton, which you can just retrieve and have the state, or you can get it as reactive, and then you have all these other properties. So you have the state, which is the same thing you would get here, but then you also have things like connection state, whether it has data, whether it has an error, what the error is. And then also being able to set the state of it. You pretty much set state on the global state. Then the rest of the package is pretty similar to provider and block and things like that. You have to, so you have to wrap your app in an injector, which is pretty much like a provider. You're injecting the state to the, the widgets below. And then you have things like state builder where you can build UI based on what state it is and you observe the reactive model that we have and change state based on that. One thing I do think is underrated about the states builder package is the fact that you can have named injectors. So with provider, if you have, if you have some model that you're using, you can only use that model once where, so let's say you have some counter state. You can only use that counter state and have it be injected with one instance. This one, you can have multiple ones and you can refer them to a name and then retrieve them by that name. I think that's a really big feature. For example, in our book club app, if we wanted to have a state for the current book and a state for the previous book, but we wanted to both of them to just be a state of type book model, we couldn't really do that with provider. With states rebuilder, that's super easy. So all right, enough yapping, let's get into the code. So I have a basic template where we have my app and we're running to the home widget. In the home widget, we just have a column with all these things, states for builder basics and three buttons. So we're gonna need a states folder. Inside this folder, we're gonna have our counter state. And like we said, the counter state is just a basic Dart class. Inside we'll have our counter and we'll create a simple method called increment counter locally. And all it's gonna do is implement the counter. So now in our home screen, what do we need to do in order to retrieve this state and be able to use it. So first things first, I need to inject this state or model. I'm gonna inject it above this column. So I'm gonna wrap with a new widget. The widget is called injector. And we could bring that in with the states rebuilder package. Obviously if you're using states rebuilder, make sure you have that package added. And states rebuilder doesn't have a property called child. It has an inject property that we need, and it also has a builder property. 
So we can remove this child keyword and then copy this column into here. And shouldn't work. All right. So now inside our injector, we want to inject a counter state. And we're going to start it off with the counter being at one. So this is the basically the default state. So there we go. We were having the error because we weren't injecting anything. Inside the builder, we can now retrieve this injected counter state. And we're going to ret retrieve it with a reactive model so that we can act upon it. So you do that by retrieving a reactive model type of counter state. And we'll name it just counter state, whatever. And then injector dot get as reactive of type counter state. So there we go. This is our reactive model that we have. So now with this counter state, you'll see we have a lot, a lot of options. The easiest one to show off is we have counter state dot, and here's all the options that we showed before. We have the state, we have a snapshot, we have connection state, error, has data, all those things. But we want to just increment it. We're just going to call set state on it, and it's going to give us everything we need. And then S is our actual counter state instance. So we do S dot increment counter local. I misspelled locally. And that will be able to increment our counter. Simple as that. In order to display that counter, we want to use a state builder. Inside the state builder, we will observe our reactive model called counter state. And our builder in here takes in a context and that counter state that we have. And now we can return a text widget with our counter state dot state with our with our counter state dot current state and our counter variable and let's turn it to string and if everything worked well it should be done so there we go we have our counter we're able to increment and it updates for us beautiful so that's pretty much the basics of states rebuilder you create a basic dart class called counter state in your home widget or whatever widget, you need to make sure you inject that counter state. Then you can use it as a reactive model in order to check on the connection state or anything of the sorts. Then in order to display the UI, you use a state builder or there's three other options. You can use state builder, when rebuilder, when rebuilder or, or on set state listener. I've only really looked into this one. so I you gotta have, you're gonna have to look at the other three on your own, but I'm sure they have their specific use. And but just supporting the simple state management is not enough for me anymore. I need to support futures and streams at the minimum. So let's add those as well. A future is just as simple. You just have to obviously retrieve it. For us, we're gonna be retrieving it from. Firebase. Once we've retrieved it, we can set our counter to the value. And there's really nothing more to it. In our on pressed, we do the same thing counter set state, except S is going to be retrieved from database. What does our database have? 14. Sounds about right. 14. And then we can update it to 18. Perfect. But streams are definitely a little bit trickier. 
So you can't directly stream it into this counter value, I think. I might need to look into it a bit more, but, but after looking at some of the examples that the author has provided, I made streams work like this. So you need a stream controller. This is going to be of type integer and we need to be able to return that stream. So that's our interface being set up. Then we need to actually retrieve it from, from the database. So this is setting up the stream. You do get snapshots and then we'll listen to whenever an event happens and add it to our sync. Also, you'll see this little error. We need to make sure we dispose of our, of our stream controller somewhere. So we have our stream interface to the Firestore set up. Now, how do we insert it in here? So here, instead of just having one inject, we're gonna have another one. But this one, we're gonna inject a stream. We will get the stream from this counter state that we're creating already. So injector.get counter state and the counter stream is what we want to get. And remember when I told you we have named injectors, so, so it's useful to have a name for this one so it's easier to retrieve. Counter stream, that's what we'll call it. Inside the builder, we'll retrieve a reactive model of that stream. We can retrieve it by its name. And of course we have a problem since we're not using it. And then in the state builder, instead of just observe, we can have observe many. And instead of just the counter state, we can also have the counter stream. Now in here, wrap it in a column. We can add text called local state. And then streamed value. And just counter stream dot state. Because the reactive model that we have is only the counter stream. So we don't need to do state dot counter or anything. And then give us put it to string so there it's null and then we have to start that stream we can obviously start it before this page even loads up but i thought just to be explicit we'll start on the button and it's just as simple as other ones counter state set state s dot stream counter from database so let's see increment works retrieve future works 18 and stream there's our stream value we can increment retrieve future if we update this number our stream value should update as well 99 there we go our future doesn't update because that's a local state and our app is pretty much working so the question I asked at the beginning, is State Rebuilder one of the best state management solutions out there? In my opinion, it is definitely one of the best. But notice I didn't say it's the best. I still believe the best solution is the one that you can implement the fastest and easiest. So if you're already used to some other state management solution, I don't think there's a big reason to change. So it'll get the job done. But if you're new to state management, I think this one's one of the easier to learn 
and it seems pretty powerful and can do almost anything that any other state management solution can do. But anyways, I will link all the packages, links and everything in the description. So make sure to check that out. I still got to keep looking into this because there's a lot more I haven't discovered yet. But that's it for this video. That's called be on GitHub. If you have any questions or anything, leave it in the comments. Hopefully I'll be able to answer them. Like, subscribe and share if you enjoy the video. And thanks for watching.